How's it going? Jasper from Nomad Codes here. Welcome to this free course where we create a chat with PDF type of app with Floodflow, Flowwise, Superbase, and OpenAI. After this course, you'll be able to create an app that your users can add their PDF documents into the knowledge base, can ask you to scrape a website and, and add the scraped content into the same knowledge base, then do a Q&A with the knowledge base and receive answers, which is generated by ChatGPT. They can also go back to previous chat sessions and resume conversation with a particular PDF or website they have already added to their knowledge base. I have my own chat with PDF or website app on the App Store, so you can check it out to see what outcome you can achieve after this crash course. This crash course does cover how Flutterflow interface is put together, how the database is designed, and also how to make the action change on Flutterflow. But you will need to have a basic understanding of how Flutterflow works. I have some videos on my channel, you can go check them out. If you need more support, you can always jump into my newly set up Discord channel to post your questions, and I'll usually reply within 24 hours. You may also purchase this template app, which is the exact app that I have published to the App Store. You can purchase the Flutterflow template to help you speed up your building process or just use it as a reference as you build up your own use cases. However, completely optional. You don't have to purchase anything. This course is meant to be free and you can achieve the same outcome without purchasing the template app. So the app is just there if you wanna speed it up a little bit more, but you definitely do not need to purchase the template. Enough said. Let's start this course and let's do a quick overview of why we're going with this particular tool stack and also how the tools work together from a holistic overview level. Why have we picked this tool stack? The biggest benefit of this tool stack is your ownership to your tool stack and your data. You also do not need to pay to get started with this tool stack. All the required functionalities are available for free this tool stack protect you from vendor locking risk because they are either open source or you can get the code after you have finished the project to host it anywhere that you want. For example, Flowwise is open source and you can host it anywhere. Superbase is open source and you can host it anywhere. Flutterflow, the tool is not open source, but you do own the entire code base of your app. Once you have your app codes downloaded, you you can host your app or publish it anywhere you want without relying on Flutterflow as the platform. There are many ways to create knowledge-based chatbot app uh, without code. For example, there are many tutorials on YouTube already on how to create this type of app with Bubble plus Flowwise plus Pinecone. However, the biggest downside with that tool stack is that other than Flowwise, which is open sourced, you are exposed to vendor locking risk. You also need pay plans for both Bubble and Pinecone to achieve the same results because some of the features we are gonna be using is actually locked behind a paywall. So how do our tools work together? To understand how the tools work together, let's briefly cover what the user experience we're trying to achieve. First, users should be able to upload a PDF into the knowledge base. Users should be able to provide a website link and scrape the content into the knowledge base. And users should be able to ask questions about the PDF uploaded or the website scraped and receive a response based on the knowledge and also based on their questions. Hence, we can see that we first need our tool stack to work together to process the documents or the website and add that into our knowledge base and then have a way to ask questions and receive a response. So let's talk about the add to knowledge base part, which we can refer to as the absurd step. Users will interact with our Flutterflow frontend to upload their PDF or provide a URL. And then we will send that PDF or URL with an API call to a specific Flowwise endpoint, which we will set up. And the endpoint will work its magic to either load the PDF content or scrape the website content, chop them up into chunks, convert the chunks into embeddings, which can then be upserted into our Superbase vector database. An embedding is like a special encoding of all type of data into vectors. You can see it as a way to format a store relationship between words. So meanings and context are captured. 
And embeddings are formatted in a vector relationship, so we need a vector database to store them. A quick note here is that when we upsert the embeddings into our vector database, we need a way to label them with metadata. So later when we want to search through them, we can then provide the metadata as a filter. So we are only searching through the embeddings with the desired metadata label instead of searching through every embeddings that we have added to our vector database. Once we have upserted our document or web, web content into our database, we need a way to ask questions to retrieve question information and formulate answers. We can call this asking and retrieve process a query. Users will first interact with the Flutterflow frontend to ask a question through an API call to our Flowwise endpoint, which we specifically set up to handle queries. Our Flowwise query chat, chat flow would then retrieve information and generate a response. We then serve the response back to our users as a message on the Flutterflow front end. Now that we have gone through an overview of our tool stack, the benefit, and also how they work together holistically, let's get started with making it happen.